stop Taki on that loads of people getting off loads of people getting on good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Takeyama we're here uh, in Takeyama we arrived about an hour ago uh, after taking a bullet train from Kanazawa to Toyama and taking a limited express train which is a train that you must get a ticket for uh, from Toyama all the way here to Takeyama that train actually carries on going all the way to Nagoya so I think the favorite route to get to Takeyama uh, is actually to come from Nagoya but we were sort of towards the north and that's why we've come down this way. We also picked up a car when we were here because we're actually in Takayama to go to Shirakawa Go. Uh, so we have to drive there so we picked up a car here. Today we're going to be hanging around Takayama Old Town which is what you can see behind me. It's kind of an, it's an Edo era town, right? I've no idea actually, did, they, did you read that? I'm pretty sure it's Edo okay. era, so it's like, it's a perfect representation of an old Edo era town. There's a few very, very old houses there, which are sort of perfect examples of the architecture of that time. I think there's some like cute cafes around and shops and stuff, a few museums. Anyway, we're going to go have a look around and then we're going to be going to our hotel tonight, which looks really special. So uh, we're going to be showing you that as well. So yeah, come along, it's going to be fun. just before we head down one of the streets we're checking out this awesome bridge there seems to be no delineation between where people can stand and where cars can go we didn't drive over this did no. we thank god for that which yeah it's a little bit horrible for all of the cars trying to get there yeah pretty much <laughs> Takayama is super famous for a really impressive festival that happens, it's October isn't it? I think it's October, I'll put a note below if I'm wrong. Um, the floats live in here, that's amazing, so they're just ready, they're ready for the festival every year, they're just living in there. And it's got the year when they were built. Well. Yeah, and this is what I'm guessing they open it every so often so that you can have a look. Um, but they're housed in these giant sort of, oh, they're sort of like sheds kind of built into the other houses, that's so cool. So these things with the big Seda ball things at the top, apparently they're made out of Seda branches. So they are the sake breweries. Yeah, so apparently you can get sake tasting here at the breweries, the old sake breweries. Funazaka. Yeah, what's the deal with the Seda ball things? Maybe it smells nice or? Gets rid of moths. Maybe. This is amazing, look at all of this. Two kinds of sake for free. <laughs> and this is the sake. They have hot sake, Liam. Dry, Aji. Uh, yeah, dry. Oh, well, that is nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. So different. Yeah. Me. Yama. A uh, Miyama. Kiku. Kiku. Hai. Miyama Kiku. Miyama Hai. Kiku. A uh, Samba mo? Eto, onaji nan desu kedo, kore, ano. Ah, so. Jun mai. Ah, Jun mai. Ah, mai. Genjo. Hai. Good Jun mai genjo. Hai. Sai go nomare ta no ga dai genjo. Dai genjo. I like the cheapest one best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. <So. laughs> this place actually has a bar as well, which is pretty cool. Ah, uh, Fune. Fune? Fune? Fune. And look, you can sit there and try loads more sake. Wow, it's kind of fancy in there, huh? Look. Oh, I love it. Sake round two. Oh my god. This cute little house set up in here. Oh, I love it. Little shrine. Whoa, and a giant soda ball. I kind of want a soda ball. 
we popped into the second sake place which is just opposite the one that we were in um, things work a little bit differently here you pay 350 yen for a little cup and over there or these people I'll take a bit better picture of it in a minute over there there's a whole load of open bottles of sake and you can try one you could have like a little cup of each of the sake, right? You can't double dip. You can't go twice for the same for one sake. Um, we're not gonna do it, even though the deal is a steal, um, because I'm driving, so I can't have that much sake. So instead, um, we went to the little cafe that's here, right at the corner, and they're serving uh, coffee or amazake. Amazake is the sweet sake which has hardly any alcohol in it at all. I think it's a bit like ginger beer, like it really has nothing in it, uh, but it's made from the same process right or a byproduct of the process it is deliciously sweet and we prefer it hot you can get it cold but we prefer it hot and they serve it hot and cold over there we also got a little cheesecake I'm trying to break into it at the moment no can't get it <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also made out of like sake products, like all byproduct of sake. So we'll try that too. I'll tell you what we think about it later. We made it to a miso store. Didn't know there was a miso store here. They actually have a little pot of miso soup uh, that you can help yourself to, which is really amazing. This is really delicious. Mm. So you've got white miso on the right, red miso on the left. It looks so cool. It is soy sauce and at the end they have one which has been matured for a year and they sell packs here, red miso, white miso and soy sauce. That's cool, right? We got a gohei mochi from this little stand just here. Uh, we think it's a grilled rice cake. Covered in... Dicky soy sauce. Uh, uh, miso and soy glaze. It's, it's got meat in it, you can't have it. Okay, it's good then, <laughs> is it? It's good and I don't think it has any meat in it. <laughs> but these are all like super old school shops and they've got stuff going all the way up the stairs as well. So is this how they would be designed before? Yeah. So all so the stuff the would be out on the side here and people would walk up and down these corridors. Is that how it worked? Yeah. This really popular place here at the end is selling beef sushi. Oh, I'm tempted, Liam. That's a big queue though. I don't know, I do like it. It is super delicious, um, but yeah, that is, that's one hell of a queue. Oh, it just goes on for miles. Uh, yeah, it's a big area. Yeah, and I think there's like other streets around as well. So not just the one that we're on, but like more down there. There's also rickshaw here as well. So you can see this here, there's no guy there, but there'll be a rickshaw driver somewhere around. If you need some information, there's a tourist information office here. I believe they probably have some English. They have free English travel brochures. We actually did pick one up, I'll show an image of it now. We're just wondering, but if you want a little bit more of a guided tour, the map certainly helps. Awesome. So we parked here. Uh-huh down here and that's the twist information which is just here oh my god so there's like loads more to go down there as well yeah oh we got a long way wow to go. sorry i'm being real slow come in this tiny little store which seems to just be going further and further back uh there's some glass blowing here that they can't take any pictures of over that way there's a cafe um which is sort of to the right of this really beautiful old house um area we've got cute hello kitty showing us the way <laughs> And then it just extends further and further back down here. Whoa. Awesome. Love those giant doors. Whoa. We popped into that Asian tea house. Um, is this a Korean place? Or well, like, it does Korean tea. Yeah, and it does boba as well, like um, tapioca pearls or tapioca style pearls, which is like not very Japanese. But it's very cute. We just got a chai. It's a chai milk tea, so I think it's just chai tea with milk, like well, yeah. not really a latte. And it's nice and warming for this time. And it's in this super cool building. It's really quite awesome in here. I'm saying to Liam, would we live here? I think we totally would. This looks like the Edo Tokyo Architectural Museum. Apart from the Kuroneko Yamato fan. <laughs> that is funny. Whoa, it's amazing. Whole architecture around here looks really, really cool. Akiyama Matsuri, Yatai Kai Kan. Festival Float Exhibition Hall. Wow, that was easier to say in Japanese than it is in English. Up we go.
we're inside the museum and it is amazing and there is no one here. Um, we're having a look at these Makoshi shrines. They do actually get used in the Takayama festival, which happens in the autumn. This Makoshi is so crazy heavy that they have 80 people carry it, two sets of 40 people, and they switch. They do 10 minutes, one set of 40 people do 10 minutes, and then the next set of 40 people do 10 minutes. That is crazy. Uh, okay, so those ones that are carried over there are Mikoshi, and these ones with the wheels underneath are Yatai, and they get pushed they're not carried about 20 to 30 people push them and do they say that somebody's enshrined in this one or it's like or it's a shrine to that, that person person's and the figures are his mother and like a vessel of him vassal. what's the difference between a vessel and a vassal no vassal is um a somebody who um reports into you effectively oh uh, it's weird that he's not on his own shrine you know well he's not as important no, 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 I mean the guy whose shrine it's dedicated to is not oh, on his own shrine. Maybe he's inside. Maybe he is inside. This float here is named after the phoenix, which is sitting on the top of it. You might be able to see it right at the top there. It's actually called the ho ho Tai, just like ho o the Pokemon. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, the audio guide that we got free with our ticket was explaining that these four shrines that we see here are actually on rotation. Uh, so if you come back in three months time, you'll see a different set of the shrines. That's all the different set of the Yatai. That's really cool. This is a really lovely shrine. Whoa, beautiful shrine building. I'll we'll take a step back and look at that. And spooky staircase. Oh, I love me a spooky staircase. Oh, and look at the omakuji on the on the um, well, trees. That's really cool. This is amazing. So this is the five-story pagoda at Nikko. But yeah, we have. We've been around this and seen uh, the post in the middle, which helps it be earthquake proof. I'll leave a link to the vlog if you want to check it out. It's one of my most popular vlogs, actually, of a day trip to Nikko. This is amazing. Um, with our ticket to the... What were they called? The Yakai Kan? <laughs> Why are we so rubbish at remembering stuff? With our ticket to uh, the museum to see uh, the Mikoshi and the Yakai, the carrying, the pushing shrines for the festival, festival museum, that was it. Uh, we also got a ticket to come here to this museum, which is really interesting. They are models of buildings that are found at Nikko. We are nowhere near Nikko here and I'm a little bit confused as to why these models are here and not actually at Nikko but anyway um, it's a whole room of like Nikko Toshogo buildings which is one of the most important shrines in Japan because it's where Tokugawa Ieyasu the first shogun or the first sort of leader of the Tokugawa shogunate which reigned in Japan for years um, it's where he is enshrined, so his mausoleum is there. And so this whole shrine complex in Nikko is dedicated to him. And yeah, there's an amazing collection of models here. Apparently, it took 15 years and 33 craftsmen to build this. This is awesome. And inside of here, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Inside of here was the ceiling with the dragon in it. And if you bash the two pieces of wood together underneath the ceiling with the dragon in it, you could hear the dragon roar. Or you could hear a very big echo. Do it in one particular place. If you yeah. It was really cool. So the sacred remains of Tokugawa Ieyasu are housed in the in a shrine. So it's made of copper, so it's black here, but there it's green, isn't it? It's turned green, yeah, because it's 
because of how the copper reacts. Which is weird because they've done that with this, but not with that. Oh yeah, that's true. They done it with the gate, but not with the actual shrine itself. But if you go, they both will be quite green. We just popped into an old Edo era kind of civil office. I actually thought it was a shrine originally because it's called Takayama Jinya and a Jinja is a shrine, so but what do I know? Just touring around having a look at these old sort of offices and civil courtrooms and these kind of things. It's really lovely. 440 yen to get in. Nice way to finish off the day. very cold their room. Yeah. They have a nice little view though. What is it they're living room for? Guests? Oh where the head officer took a rest here whilst he was on duty. Oh, I might be in the head officer. So over there that was the head officer's room. And this is the head officer's wife's room, which seems a little bit far away, but there is a secret path over here, <laughs> which connects them. Yeah, I've never seen a kitchen. At least I don't think I've seen a kitchen. This is really cool. What's out over there then? Is this a storehouse for the kitchen? It's a lovely bed. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I love that little sofa. The little sofa is adorable. Yes. Um, cool. Yes, yeah, so we're going to need that heater. And th I love this long bench. The long bench with the TV at the end. We've arrived at our hotel, which is called Auberge Hidenomori. Hidenomori is Hidenomori, isn't it? Um, which is like out in the... Um, it's out in the woods actually of Takayama. It took us about 15 minutes to drive here from the center of town. They, Might have been less, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a short drive, but there's no way that you can get here by public transport. If you book here, they will actually offer to come pick you up. Um, and, uh, but we obviously picked up a car so that we could drive to Shirakawa, go tomorrow. And, um, and then it meant getting here was very, very easy. Uh, this is a beautiful room. It's a really lovely room, a nice sized bed little sofa here we have loads of space to spread out they have a pasta restaurant downstairs um they're going to be making us food later and for liam they're going to be making vegetarian um food so they're not going to be putting any uh any fish or meat into his dish but, but they will be using eggs and dairy and cheese um we think we think um so yeah we're going to get settled in we'll show you a little bit more of the hotel in a little bit after we've um got ourselves sorted out Which one? <laughs> More body? No, it's enough. <laughs> I don't have anything too heavy. Um, this one's actually very nice. Sure. Yeah. And I'll take the second sure. one. Of <laughs> Thank you so much.
unbelievable meal in the hotel. Um, so don't, I did I tell you a little bit about this hotel? I can't remember. I found this on booking.com and I think booking.com is the only place where you can book uh, rooms at this hotel so uh, if you want to stay here then um, booking.com is a place to do it the concept of the hotel is quite interesting they have these beautiful rooms but they're very very basic it almost seems like a very very upgraded hostel um and like this is all our room nobody else is sharing a room with us or anything but it's just like a very basic room um we share bathrooms here so there's um a couple of very large bathrooms which have full baths in them and so i believe a family is supposed to wash and bathe together so liam and i will go later on today have a wash and have a bath very kind of onsen style so it, it will be like going to an like a private onsen but it's it's just a bath it's not like onsen water that's come from the ground or anything and they also have um shared toilets as well so there's women's toilets and men's toilets so there's no bathroom in our room whatsoever um which is really interesting but downstairs they also have an amazing little restaurant and it really is tiny there's only I think 16 people or 18 people that can fit in it max and they serve quite high quality Italian set menu they were they were very very nice and cooked Liam a complete vegetarian meal and it was vegetarian it wasn't vegan so there was no fish and no meat in there but they were very amiable so I think if you are vegan and you came and stayed here you could tell them look I'm vegan I believe they will make you have vegan meal i believe i'm not too sure when it comes to italian food italian food is quite good for liam um because it can often be vegetarian but does still often contain cheese and egg and uh, dairy products so you need to be a little bit careful if you're vegan but anyway for him it was perfect and it was beautiful um the chef obviously knows their stuff i i don't i think it's a woman and a man that are working together and i don't know which which one of them cooks um but they've obviously travelled in Europe and um, and done some chef training. I don't know how the food industry works, um, but they've obviously done some chef training or something in Europe because it was absolutely exquisite. Um, we're now hanging out in our room and I believe what happens here in the evening is you hang out in your room, go have an onsen, chill, relax. And uh, in the morning, uh, they make you breakfast. So breakfast is um, is part of the price. It's not an option. It's part of the price. So I'm gonna chill out now and um, watch some stuff on YouTube actually. And uh, yeah, just um, Liam and I will go later on. I think in an hour or so's time and have have a bath. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs>